Call of order to the Township of Hillsborough Planning Board, May 12th meeting, 2016. Pledge allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good evening. <clears throat> This meeting has been duly advertised according to the Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law, 1975, Sunshine Law. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Here. Yeah. Mr. Wagner. Here. Mr. Hestag. Here. Mr. Becarena. Here. Ms. Forrest. Here. Vice Chairman Dr. Maruli. Here. Deputy Mayor Sirachi. Here. And Chairman Lapine. Here. First order of business would be the deposition of the minutes dated May 5th, 2016, which would be in your packet. The eligible members, Mr. Chairman or Mr. Wagner, uh, yourself, Mr. Hashtag, Ms. Beccarina, and Ms. Forrest. I'll move to accept them. I will second that. Roll call. Mr. Wagner. Yes. Mr. Hestag. Yes. Ms. Becarena. Yes. Ms. Flores. Yes. Chairman Lapon. Yes. <clears throat> uh, next order we have disposition of resolutions, which I do believe there are none. Planning board business. I don't believe there's any. Is there any committee reports? None. Okay. Any business from the floor at this time that is not on today's agenda? Seeing none, consideration of ordinances, which we do not have any. Okay, that was the first six very quickly. All right, so our first up uh, will be for public hearing will be Hillsborough Realty, LLC, reference Weissman Enterprises, LLC, 04PB 25MJ, file 16PB 05RES, block 17517. Lot 1505, formerly known as Block 175, Lot 15, prior to subdivision, 1 Danbury Court. Applicate, applicant requesting amendment to the original subdivision approval, Revo Resolution 04 PB 25 MJ, dated 5 1205 for Block 175, Lot 15, as to the finding of fact which read to the existing house would remain. The new owner is proposed to demolish the existing house and replace it with a new one within the previously approved building envelope with no variances on the property in the R residential zoning district. Councilor? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the planning board and members of the public. My name is Francis P. Linus and I'm pleased to represent Hillsborough Realty LLC. Uh, the chairman in sum and substance did read what the application is all about. Uh, back in 2005, this board granted a five-lot residential subdivision. The owner of the property at the time said he wanted to create four new building lots, but he wanted to rent out the existing house. The new owner is the developer here tonight, and uh, he's under contract to sell the house with the existing lot, but his contract requires the demolition of the house and the construction of a new home. Uh, it will be beneficial uh, in that a new home is usually uh, uh, more attractive than, than an existing home, and uh, we're here tonight to uh, get relief from that finding of fact. Certainly the finding of fact back in 2005 did not mean that the house would stay there forever. So basically that's the sum and substance of the application, and we respectfully request uh, your approval. Okay. Anything, Eric? Any witnesses, Mr. Linus? Are you? Uh, no, but I do have the developer here. But why don't you bring him up? Just okay. To... DJ. By the way, would you, clear, would you clear the mic again, please? please. Have you been sworn in? No. Can we just... Raise your right hand. Be sure to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, I do. State your full name, spelling your last name. Felice Tanga, T A N G A. Spell your first name, please. F E L I C E. Thank you. All right, Mr. Tanga, you're uh, a representative of Hillsborough Realty LLC, are you not? 
Yes. And you're the owner, Hillsboro Realty is the owner of the property? Yes. Okay, and you're now under contract to sell the, the lot in question, is that yeah. correct? Yes. And under your contract, uh, you're required to deliver a home on or about September 1st of this year? Yes. All right, you're asking this board to uh, amend and delete a finding of fact uh, way back in 2005 that said at the time that the then owner was going to keep the house intact and rent it out or do whatever. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay. And you're asking this board to uh, uh, to give you that relief so you can get a demolition p permit, hopefully pull it tomorrow and start getting it de demolishing the house and building the house consistent with the, uh, uh, the zoning ordinance. You're not looking for any variances or setback variances or any bulk variances, are you? No, I'm not. Okay. I have no further questions. Anyone from the board? I have a question. Did, when you purchased, uh, I'm assuming you purchased the property from another owner. Yes, I did. And from Weiss you knew at, you knew, and knew at the time of this of this ordinance that the house was was in this ordinance was it not to be torn down? Uh, well, according to what finding a fact, I guess you're saying that that you're buying it. That the original had kept it the way it was on purpose and was not going to develop. Well, actually, the previous owner they rented the house. We never rented the house. We just keep it. Vac we kept the vacant for the past, I believe, nine years. Sir, okay. Speak up. And I guess you've entered into a contract to demolish this house without asking the permission for us to even do that yet. Is that correct? Um, I did. Well, it's well, no I guess it, he's asking for permission. He's or, and you're asking us to to expedite this this decision. Yet you've already tried to promise this to to someone already. Is that correct? Well, well first of all, Mr. Chairman, the the finding of fact. We wouldn't be here other than there's a standard condition in all resolutions saying it, all findings of fact are conditions of the uh, approval. Okay. Uh, certainly, I don't think the, uh, the board would frustrate the ability of someone. There's no reason to keep the existing house in existence, no, I, I and he's not that. violating anything. I just was trying to get at the, the timeline yeah. here that he would. No, what he, what technically he is, Mr. Linus. Uh, the condition, which the finding of fact, which became a condition, was that the prior approval was based upon four new lots and the current dwelling. And my question is, that, does that mean that that house has to remain there forever? No, but the point is he's now here asking the board to amend the resolution. Which is our request, which that's Which is correct. your request. And I think what the chairman's question is, was he aware at the time of the purchase of the property that there was a condition within the purchase that involved the house being remaining in its current condition yes i did uh but not that we could not knock down the home i did know that uh but we didn't know that we could knock down our own home and at this time the home has been empty for about nine years and it's right across the street mm -hmm. and we're just would like to demolish the house and build a new home on the current, in the on the current footprint of the existing home. Use the turn. Flip the other <coughs> mic. We can. Cause I think the mic turned off there. So. Yeah, this existing home is not even on the building envelope. I believe that is uh, filed with the county and the township. The home that we are going to demolish going to build the new home where the existing home is on the same building lot so not necessarily on the same footprint but on the same lot on the same lot it's a one acre lot if the board grants you the approval would it be consistent with the other four homes in, in the neighborhood yes okay consistent with the other four lots in the subdivision That's yes would it meet all the requirements of the setbacks in the zone and for the lot? Yes. Anything? Okay. We have any uh, motion for this application? For motion to open the public. Motion to open public, excuse me. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, would anyone from the floor have any questions for the testimony just given on this property?
testimony only. Okay, seeing none. <coughs> motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we have for an application to demolish a house and build a house in its stead consistent with the other homes within this subdivision, uh, requiring no variances as far as setback or, or anything else. Is that correct, Counselor? That's correct. Okay. Mr. Linus, what's the status of the taxes? Uh, we were advised this afternoon that the second quarter was due and owing. The second quarter was uh, due on May 1st. I called my client immediately and he ran down to the tax, tax authority and I have a receipt for the taxes in my hand and I'd be glad to provide this to the board. Please provide a copy okay. of the board. Appreciate his, well, it was across the street, so it was close. <laughs> well, if you want a permit, it takes money, right? All right. And by the way, for the record, it was $950 or thereabouts. Okay. Okay, David? Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion for this uh, application? I'll move this application mm -hmm. for. Uh, uh, Weisman Enterprises LLC 04 PBMJ, uh, now known as Hillsborough Realty LLC, file 16 PB06. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Wagner. Yes. Mr. Hestag. Yes. Ms. Beccarena. Yes. Ms. Forrest. Yes. Vice Chairman Dr. Maruli. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sirachi. Yes. And Chairman Lapani. Yes. All right. Thank you very thank you much, Chancellor. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Next up is Meadowbrook of Hillsborough. Bear with me. It's a relatively long paragraph. File 16 PB02 MJSR, Block 163.05, Lots 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. Proposed lots 101.01 and lot 101.02 after subdivision. Proposed lot 101.02, subject of application. Currently 495 Amwell Road, lot 101. Q Farm, Amwell Road, lot 102. 503 Amwell Road, lot 103. 505 Amwell Road, lot 104. And 507 Amwell Road, lot 105. Applicant is seeking preliminary and final major subdivision approval. Preliminary and final major site plan approval, relief from maximum tract area for a single family dwelling identified and hardship waiver for the tree preservation ordinance to preserve proposed lot 101.02, 17.166 acres into 46 lots. 44 lots for single family detached homes, one multifamily lot 2.49 acres to construct 30 multifamily townhomes situated within three buildings and one open space lot 6.06 .06 acres to contain the stormwater basin and all necessary parking, roadways, utilities, and improvements on property in the ARW Amwell Road West <coughs> Zoning District. This project is governed by the subdivision of the new Amwell Redevelopment Plan. Revised plan submitted 415-16. Subdivision deeds filed 418-16 for lots 101.01 .01 and 101.02. EC reviews dated 425-16 and 523-16. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Board, members of the public. My name is Francis P. Linus, and I'm pleased to represent uh, K. Hobnanian tonight. K. Hobnanian is the contract purchaser of the property that for which we're seeking approval. Uh, the project would be known as Meadowbrook at Hillsboro. Uh, tonight, we're, we're, we're not going to get into the technical aspects of the, the application. Uh, we would like to give the board a, a broad overview, board and the public, a broad overview of, of what the project consists of. And then we would return at a, a later date to, to make the uh, presentation of our experts. Uh, initially, by way of introduction and background for those uh, persons who are here and, and uh, persons who are here tonight. Uh, prior to 19, uh, 2014, uh, the township committee undertook a preliminary investigation as to whether a study area for these lots 
Block 163.05, lots 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105 uh, would be appropriate to be designated as an area in need of rehabilitation. As a result of that, uh, CME Associates was retained by the township to prepare that study, and they did prepare a redevelopment plan for this property back in October of 2014. Uh, it went to the planning board, and the planning board in December of 2014 uh, adopted the re redevelopment plan and recommended it to the township committee. The township committee then in 2015, in April of 2015, officially approved the redevelopment plan and uh, by way of an ordinance that was adopted by the township in, on May 21st, excuse me, adopted on May 12, 2015, it created the ordinance which uh, uh, governs the use and development of this property. Uh, some of you board members may recall that the first section of this property, uh, there was an application back in June of 2015 from RPM. Uh, RPM was the developer of the front portion of this property, three acres of the 20 acres, and uh, they received the approval of the board for a subdivision as well as a site plan. Uh, K. Hobnanian is the uh, contract purchaser and will hopefully be the developer of the remaining piece, the 17 acres, and we're going to be seeking preliminary and final subdivision approval together with preliminary and final site plan approval. I have just one witness tonight, and that's David Fisher from K. Hobnanian. He's a vice president of K. Hobnanian, and uh, we'd like to make a presentation to the board and the public on an overview situation. Okay, you swear so without Mr. further Fisher. ado. Tell the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. Thank you. Stay your full name and spelling, your last name. Need the mic. Oh, uh, David Fisher, F I S H E R, and Vice President of Go Governmental Affairs with Cavanian Homes, Edison, New Jersey. Okay. You can sit down again and use the, the other mic, please. Okay, Dave, what, what is your company's relationship with the property owner? We are, as you said, um, contract purchasers. All right, hold on. Can you make sure that's on? Hit the button until it's green. On now? Good, okay. thank you. Sorry. Um, we're contract purchasers, have been since August 11th, 2014. So um, we've been working with the property owner and also with RPM to um, coordinate uh, engineering work and um, the applications that are before the township. All right, can you provide a brief overview of the property in question as well as the redevelopment designation? and the adopted zoning plan that now applies to the property? Yeah, I, I think actually you did a pretty good job. Uh, mm -hmm. You summarized the property in question. When we submitted uh, the application, it was still divided into those five lots. Um, what's occurred since then, and it's just been recently, on April 18th, 2016, RPM um, recorded the deed that created the two new lots, which was part of their approval. So it created the 3.4 and change acre parcel for their development, and it created a remainder parcel of about 17.17 acres for the balance of the development, which is the subject of our application. Um, RPM will be developing, as you know, um, affordable housing units in support of the town's Mount Laurel compliance plan, 54 units, uh, 14 of which um, will be reserved for special needs housing. Um, I think what's interesting or unique is that uh, we're also supporting the town's affordable housing plan in that it requires us to pay an in-lieu contribution of 1% of the assessed value of each home. Um, so in addition to the, uh, uh, the units that are being built by RPM, um, we'll also be providing uh, funds for the township's affordable housing trust fund. Okay. Can you explain the difference between uh, this development application and the one processed by RPM Development Company last year? Sure. They had a, a simple site plan application with two buildings, um, and they established a main entrance road uh, right through the center of the, um, the development to ultimately connect to a street that would become part of our development. Um, so I think I, I just kind of described the scope of what they're proposing. Um, as I said, we've been working with them so that we'll have a cross access easement um, on that access road because we will share that access road with them. Um, and I'll point out to the board in a second uh, on the site plan uh, a secondary access as well. Okay. All right. I, I, I'd like you to display some of your exhibits. We've pre marked and have handouts of, of six exhibits, and we also have uh, uh, 
uh, board displays of the exhibits. Yeah, I, I marked the uh, handout exhibit A1. Um, not that anything isn't already provided by the following exhibits. They're all the same except for the cover. Uh, so the 11 by 17 color handout is A1. First page in your packet, and we're marking it as Exhibit A1, is the display board. You want to identify that, please? Sure. This is uh, uh, called a general location map. It's an aerial photograph of the general vicinity on which we have superimposed a, uh, a site plan rendering of not only our development, but we wanted to uh, also show the two buildings to be developed by RPM in the front because it's really integral to the overall uh, uh, community that, that will be developed here. So this is marked A2, and it shows uh, the property which um, through RPM site has frontage along Amwell Road west of Raider Boulevard, and um, it's adjacent to the courtyard at Amwell Office Complex to the east, uh, vacant uh, home office occupation property to the west, and several uh, apartment and condominium developments kind of surrounding the property to further to the west, north, and east. Um, Renate Drive is a uh, unimproved right-of-way. It services that complex, but uh, it also provides a right-of-way that comes right to our property. We don't intend to create any vehicular access to Renate Drive, um, but New Jersey American Water has uh, a water line in, in that and has asked us to consider looping the water in that location, and our plans reflect that. So this is kind of an overall picture. Uh, the, the Royce Brook tributary is um, kind of along the northern boundary of the property. Um, it's, it's a tributary of the Royce Brook that kind of moves from west to east. And uh, associated with that, of course, are wetlands regulated by the NJDEP, uh, as well as a flood hazard area uh, that is regulated by the Delaware Road and Canal Commission and um, pursuant to a stream carter buffer that the township of Hillsborough has. Moving along, the, uh, this is an, an enlargement of the site plan. And what's the identification of that exhibit? This is A3, and it just says subdivision and site plan rendering. Um, again, here are the two buildings uh, proposed by RPM. Um, by the way, if I didn't mention it, they just closed with the property owner last week. So they have, I believe, all of their approvals. They're ready to go. and. They will probably start construction in the not too distant future. Um, here's their main access road between the two buildings. They've got parking that services it behind those buildings. And then our, our development begins here. So we have a uh, roadway that runs east-west and then loops around creating um, an opportunity for the subdivision of lots. The redevelopment plan called for up to 45 single family lots and 30 three story townhomes. And our application reflects that, except we're one less lot. Uh, we're 44 lots, not 45. So the subdivision would be created. That's the subdivision portion of the application. The site plan portion of the application is where the townhomes are. And then there's a, uh, a tot lot play area located next to one of the townhomes with benches and bike, bike racks <coughs> and those types of things. Um, as you can see, there's a stormwater basin that's up in kind of the northeastern portion of the property because that's the lowest part of the site. And we've designed what uh, will be a wet pond uh, in accordance with the statewide stormwater management regulations. Um, overall density of the project, it's around four units per acre for the single family homes, uh, about 12 units per acre just for the site plan for the 30 townhomes. So, but on an overall basis, it's less than four and a half homes per acre. And is that density consistent with the redevelopment plan and the ordinance? It is. Um, when the chairman read the notice, there's, there's one potential issue that um, we need to address 
which is the area assigned to single family homes. Um, depending on how you measure it, we think we comply, but um, what's put, stated on our plans, it's, it's over the maximum. So other than that, we meet all of the bulk standards, all the density standards, and uh, we're not seeking any variances um, or waivers from, from those. Um, the architecture, I'll just run through very quickly. I know this is an overview, but the next three exhibits are just illustrations. We submitted um, uh, 32. And, and the exhibit you're displaying is what exhibit? A I'm sorry, it's uh, A4. And what does it represent? This represents the Haddonfield model. Um, and there are four single family homes proposed uh, that range in size from about 2,250 square feet up to about 2,900 square feet this being uh, about 2,400 uh, square feet. And um, all the homes are just a hair under 40 feet wide. They fit well on the lots uh, within the setbacks. Um, and you know, they're varying depths, but uh, we think that uh, it would create a nice opportunity for um, modest size housing in the town. Uh, and here's the largest model. This is A5 called the Brookdale, um, and that, that's the one that gets up to 2,933 square feet. So that's just, it uh, gives you kind of a flavor of the combination of elevations that we do. Normally when we build single family homes like this, we have at least two, sometimes three different elevation options. So someone can pick, pick a more colonial um, theme versus kind of a craftsman or a traditional architecture. And we move around some of the gables and, and roof lines so that uh, they, they create differences. Um, and lastly, the uh, townhomes, um, and this is, uh, all these are supported by uh, a set of plans we submitted, uh, 32 sheets of architectural plans um, that uh, we provided to the township as part of the application. And this is A6, the last exhibit. Um, this is, is the- A6, Dave? A6 is uh, uh, what I would call a perspective rendering of the three-story townhouse building. Um, and this is the eight-unit building, which is located right here, kind of on that first corner. So uh, a stacked townhouse is a little different than what you might be used to, accustomed to in a traditional two-story townhouse. Uh, it gets you a little higher density. Each home has a one-car garage and a single wide driveway. But within each kind of component of this, there's four components to this townhouse building. They're 26 feet wide. There are two townhomes in that width. One is, has the living on the first level, and then partial, um, their bedrooms on half of the second level. And then the upper unit, you walk up to your living space, and then your bedrooms are on the third floor. Um, it's not for everyone, but we find that uh, young singles, couples, uh, and um, you know, those that are not looking for a, a tremendous amount of square footage, the lower unit is about 1,600 square feet, the upper, uh, around 2,100 square feet. Uh, two bedrooms on the bottom, three bedrooms on the top. So uh, those are kind of an overview or illustration of the architectural designs. And then- All right, right now in the common areas in a homeowners association, can you yes. describe the common areas associated with the proposed subdivision and the responsibility of a homeowners association that would be formed to own and maintain these features? Absolutely. Uh, the common areas are a little unusual for this type of a development. You would think with a single family subdivision, the roads would be public streets, but these will not be. They'll be private streets. Um, and the so reason even within the single family component, there'll be private streets. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, we talked to the town about this even before we made the application, and they felt that because none of our streets connect directly to a public right of way, um, we couldn't establish you know, public right-of-ways that are isolated from other public streets. So they will all be designed in accordance with the RSIS requirements, 28 feet wide, sidewalks on both sides, uh, but they will be established within a street line that becomes part of the association's responsibility to maintain, and we have to create reserves for the ultimate repair and replacement of those streets, along with other portions or components of the open space, and that would include all of the common area landscaping, the tot lot play area, the benches, the uh, bicycle racks, um, the uh, storm drainage basin, so the basin would be maintained, owned and maintained by the homeowners association, 
uh, there would be an operation and maintenance manual that would go along with that, and I know that the town um, would, uh, you know, requires us to adhere to uh, all the current requirements for how to maintain a wet pond. So I think that's pretty much an overview of what the association would require. We would set up a uh, public offering statement. Um, as part of this, it will have two components. So the master deed will describe the single family homes as well as the town homes, um, you know, with the required bylaws and, and uh, budget and reserves that are necessary to um, establish a community right, like this. Out of the 17 acres, how much would be devoted to open space? Uh, the open space, I think, is about 35% of the site, um, about six, a little over six acres. So, I mean, the vast majority of that is uh, along the back of the property. Um, you know, uh, mu much of that is wooded, uh, essentially all of it's wooded, some less so than, than other pockets. Um, I've walked the site, in fact, I walked the site with the Environmental Commission just uh, uh, Saturday, uh, last Saturday. So, um, there's, if, if you looked at an aerial photograph of the property, um, I would say a good third of the property is already vacant. It was farmed many, many years ago, like everything else in Hillsboro. Um, and some of it has grown back, so it's mainly successional growth and pines and, and things like that. Um, but um, we are going to have to do some tree clearing, and uh, we need to talk to your planning department about how to approach the uh, tree mitigation requirements. All right, can you tell us, Dave, where the application stands in relationship to the township's review as well as other regulatory agencies? Certainly. Uh, we've received review, four different review letters, one from the town's fire marshal, one from the planning director, David Maskey, uh, one from the Environmental Commission. We met with the Environmental Commission on April 25th, uh, and then we had a site visit on April 30th, um, and then after which they issued a report dated May 6th. Uh, so we're reviewing that. And then uh, lastly, um, the conflict engineer CME associates issued their report on May 6th as well. And we've uh, begun to go through that uh, so that we can address all of the comments that are contained in that report. All right, in addition to the uh, planning board jurisdiction and, and approval from the planning board, are there other agencies that will be looking at our application and, and making a determination as to whether they it requires an approval? Certainly. Uh, there's uh, the Hillsborough MUA um, to review and approve the sanitary sewer, um, you know, which then has to go to DEP for treatment works approval. So there's two levels of review of the sewer. Um, the Delaware Raritan Canal Commission, as I mentioned before, has to review and approve our stormwater management plan and uh, our development along the um, flood hazard area. Somerset County Planning Board has jurisdiction over this application because of the subdivision and site plan requirements. Uh, Somerset Union Soil Conservation District, and we've made submissions to all of these agencies. Uh, and lastly, NJDEP. We haven't applied for everything at DEP just yet, uh, but we applied for a flood hazard verification so that we can pinpoint the location of the flood hazard area along the stream. There's already a stream delineation by FEMA along that tributary, but um, DEP's jurisdiction is a little bit different, so we will uh, Okay, I have no further that. questions. Dave? <coughs> Anything for? Not at this time of this okay. witness. Okay. Brian? Mr. Chairman, based, uh, based upon the fact that the uh, testimony was pretty much general in nature, um, Mr. Fisher didn't really delve into our report in any great depth. I don't think it's appropriate right now for me to comment. I'll withhold comment until such time as uh, more substantial testimony has been provided. Okay. I would like to, like to add a couple comments, if I would. Sure. Um, uh, this obviously is going to take more than one hearing. Uh, Mr. Fisher laid out the various reports he's received, and in total, there are quite a number of comments and questions uh, regarding the application. We would appreciate it if the applicant could uh, revise the plans as needed, particularly as called out in uh, CME's report, uh, to answer some of the questions ahead of time and to allow us to perhaps uh, issue revised re uh, reports on this application so okay. that we don't leave all the questions till the end. I agree. Secondly, um, as was mentioned, yes, and we have no objection to that. As a matter of fact, we're, uh, I think we've scheduled a meeting with uh, uh, the engineer to discuss issues. Okay. Yes, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. I spoke with the applicant's engineer uh, just today, I believe, and we're scheduled to meet with them tomorrow to try to uh, chip away at some of the more technical aspects of the uh, comments in our reports. Okay. 
Just one other thing uh, before it gets by. As it was mentioned, this is governed by the redevelopment plan. The applicant will be required to enter into, enter into what is called a redeveloper's agreement with the township through the township committee. That, those documents are being prepared uh, presently. They will need to go to the township committee and obviously to Kehavnanian as well to uh, come to an agreement. That agreement really ought to be in place prior to the, this board making a final decision. Barring that, you could condition any decisions you make on the finalization of that plan. However, as I said, th those agreements uh, are being prepared now, uh, depending on the schedule as it plays out for future hearings. Uh, ideally, that redeveloper agreement would be uh, finalized and signed by both parties prior to this board making a final decision. Thank you, David. All right, any questions from the board? Yeah. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing I was wondering about was the potential impact on surrounding roads and neighborhoods and like where the traffic would go. So I think a uh, comment did say there were no other roads that lead to like towards other roads. Everything I think came out towards Animal Road. So That's is that correct. just one road and can that sustain that the traffic of all the people that would be living in there? Well, according to our traffic engineer, it can. Uh, we submitted a traffic report. I'm not that expert, but um, we'll hear testimony from uh, the firm of Dolan and Dean. They also did the traffic report for the, the project in the front. So they're familiar with the site and the characteristics of the area, uh, but um, I believe they can demonstrate that um, there is adequate uh, you know, timing and, and levels of service to get vehicles in and out of the site. And would that be would, would that cons potentially consider a light to have to be put at that corner? Not in their opinion, no. They they didn't come to that conclusion. Okay. But the board will will hear extensive testimony from our traffic consultant, and we've already filed the traffic impact statement. Mm. Sam, just a clarification. Uh, I, I took a walk back in this area. You can kind of get lost back there. Uh, <laughs> I know there's an old cemetery back there. Is that on your property or beside yours? Just I'm not aware of a cemetery. When I did the walk with the two members of the Environmental Commission, we didn't come across anything. It, it doesn't mean it's not possible. Um, we can talk to the owners to see if they're aware of anything uh, where there's a cemetery. If there is, I'm sure it's way back in the woods somewhere. Yeah, it's back in the woods there to the, uh, I'm thinking the, look at the map here, it would be the north east, east corner. Or over toward Renate Drive. Correct. Okay. And I just want to clarify that. Okay. Uh, when you come back, clarify that, please. Sure. And the second thing is, uh, I saw, you know, you had a wetlands study done, but I did not get the report on that. For my still, packet. that's still. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the Environmental Commission had asked us to clarify that as well. Uh, okay. what, what's a little unusual is the property owners secured freshwater wetlands LOIs for different parts of the property. They did mm -hmm. it for three lots and then they did it for two lots. Um, one was about to expire, so they renewed that one and a, a recent LOI was issued, but again, just for those two lots. We're going to have to extend or renew the other one probably the middle of this year. So yeah, there are two LOIs that um, establish the wetlands uh, for the property, and we can provide you know copies of the the maps and and the letters. Very good, Dr. Merlin. Uh, yes, yeah, regarding the, um, I think it's an office complex to the east, uh, and the access off of Amwell Road. So there's a right of way from that onto the private road. That's correct. There's, a, there's an access easement that that owner granted right. to the owner of this property to be able to use his driveway to gain right. access to the site, yes. And Are there going to be, do you believe there will be any modifications necessary to that access in order to handle the traffic to the development? I don't think so. I mean, it covers their driveway from Amwell Road all the way back to where we would connect to it. And it's actually drawn, you know, there's a diagram of it and it's shown on our survey. Um, and that document was, you know, recorded back in April of 2005. Um, so and I, I think I, I think it covers everything that we would need to access um, mm -hmm. just from the point at which 
our east-west roadway intersects with their parking lot and then moves out to right. the front. Right. Yeah, we just want to make sure that that's very clear at the time of the application uh, because it is, it's an unusual setup, you know, and there's going to be a concern also exiting left-hand turns mm -hmm. um, with the volume of traffic because we have a significant volume with the buildings up front, then, you know, the, the volume from the rest of the community. And um, there's always a concern with uh, cross, you know, cross turning. Gotcha. Okay. We'll and, remind and our traffic expert. Right. And that will be addressed by our traffic consultant. Yeah. When right. It comes sure. To yeah. I just wanted to bring and that we up. We appreciate so the input. Yeah. This yeah. Season. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, okay. I would just add to that thinking about Pleasant View across the street. Yeah. Coming yeah. out of Ann Van Park, that's a busy street. So we, you put the two together, that could uh, increase the danger. That that actually came up, I think, with the original application for the the buildings in the front was the distance between Pleasant View and that center access between the buildings that was uh, addressed. But now we have a greater volume and more potential left-hand turns. Okay, um, so noted. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Just talking generalities about the uh, homeowners association's yes. responsibilities. That that'll also include uh, the you know street lighting, the cost of maintaining, and I uh, I believe so. I don't I, I don't know whether we got street lighting approved by is it, uh, JCPNL here <coughs> or no. Yeah. I, I believe so. Sometimes we can, we you know, towns will accept street lights, um, you know, as long as they fit the the normal BSE and G or JCPNL model. Um, but if not, they'll, they'll be privately owned and maintained. Okay. And also the fire hydrants. Uh, fire hydrants. Usually, we see the town, the water department, or you know, whether it's an MUA or a private water company. I think New Jersey American will want to maintain jurisdiction over the hydrants. Well, what it is is there's a cost associated with those. They'll maintain them. But there's a they charge you. there's a yearly charge for those. So we'll look into that. Okay. Uh, those are the types of items that can be covered in the redeveloper agreement. The town will lay out who's paying for what, who's okay. maintaining for what. So there'll be no questions after that. Okay. Anyone? Else? All right. Um, so now we'll motion to open to public. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we have questions for this public. Now, remember, this is just in general what the testimony was today. Uh, there will be another meeting when the experts will come in and, and answer more detailed questions that you may have. So remember, the questions need to be based on the testimony and this witness, what he can testify to. So we, uh, may, I'm not going to say you can't come up, but just remember that's what he can answer. It's not to frustrate anybody. So the first, we'll start on the left over here. The young man that had his hand in the back. Come up to the front, please. Come up to the front to the microphone and say your name for the record and ask your question. First of all, thank you for calling me a young man. Uh, <laughs> my name is Joe Cosmano. I'm one of the property owners of the. Can you state the your address? Question. Your address, please. 134 Volley's Drive, Branchburg, New Jersey. I've owned the property for over 20 years. The graveyard is not on the property. Okay. Absolutely not. Just want to clarify that. Spell your last name, sir. C U S U M A N O. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else on the left side? Come up. Uh, we'll start with the back, if we can, and come up there. Go ahead. All right. Should give it to you. State your name and uh, address. So your last name? Uh, it's L A S T E L L A. And address? It's two ninety nine Gemini Drive. Okay. okay. I just have a question. You said that the. You speak into the mic, please. But I know it's kind of hard. That you're working with is like thirty something acres. Twenty. Not quite. Uh, it's twenty, twenty acres. Twenty point okay. nine acres is the total. The percentage you're going to keep is what? Uh, well, the twenty acres is the entire property. <laughs> Seventeen is what we're developing with okay. this application. So of the seventeen acres. 
we're developing all but six acres of it. So six acres are of roughly 35% of the property. Now, does that consider the open space between the properties? Is that the six acres as well? Is that no, no. Uh, all of that? No, it's just the open space along the stream and where our detention basin is. Okay, and that stream is, you guys have taken that in consideration because it does flood. Like yes. The, like I live on Gemini, like right back to that stream and it does, that water Behind comes us. right up. Yeah. Almost to the condo. Yeah. Well, I, I know some of your units are fairly close to the stream. And how close are the, your units going to be to the condo is that back up to Gemini? Well, we're on the total opposite side of the stream, but I would say, Ray, do you have any rough idea how the how close we are to the stream or the, yeah, the nearest co condominium units? We can't have it. No? Okay. Okay. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. After the meeting, I can I can you know scale it from our plans. Yeah, I'm just curious. And we'll have yeah. some testimony at the next meeting with the with the uh, yeah, civil with engineers the, and stuff can give you more detailed yeah, answers. I'll do that then. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Fisher. Could you just it might be helpful if you go up to the exhibit and just point out where the property line is at the rear. Sure. Where, where your backyards end on the houses and where the property line actually yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, the property line uh, on the exhibit in your handouts and here is shown by this heavier dark dashed line, black dashed line. So it runs all the way up, up here, I barely hit it, but there's essentially it runs along the stream way back here. Here's, here's the condominium units that we're not, you know, the stream, our property is fairly close to, but of course we're not doing anything there. We're creating more of, um, you know, a distance between the stream and, and our homes. Then it fo follows all the way into this corner here and then comes back on this route. So if you, the, the six acres you're referring to are, are those, uh, the non-colorized portion in the rear and to the side where you have the blue uh, uh, detention basin, is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Is that better? Can I just ask one sure. question? Come on. Come back to the mic, please. <laughs> so I just have one other question. You said that, is there like a town ordinance, and you guys probably would know because it's my first time ever to one of these meetings, is there an ordinance that says certain amount of property has to be saved like I mean he said a lot of it's already open space so does that count in the variance of saying okay well Hillsborough has an ordinance saying we have to keep a certain amount of property is that implied in that like with the open space is already there or are they just saying okay it's set whatever how many acres we're just going to take it down to 30 percent what's the 30 percent there are requirements for setbacks and buffers regarding neighboring properties and the homes within the lots themselves. There is no specific ordinance that says that every property in the township must have X percent of open space. But I mean, as far as for development, he's saying he's keeping a certain amount of percentage of that property. That's what's set forth in the zoning ordinance relative to this development. Okay. All right. And yeah. just to, if I can maybe add to that, which may help answer your question, okay. in addition to that, there is also, uh, there are also environmentally constrained areas associated with that stream back there right. in which the developer can't build. So that in and of itself, those environmental restrictions are going to limit the amount that they, they can and will and do limit the amount of okay, development I'm just worried about have. the overflow with that water with the building if it's going to affect my condo like with the water rising. Uh, I can tell you that I'm sure that their engineer is going to provide substantial okay. testimony on that. Uh, myself and my office have reviewed it. Okay. Uh, and when that testimony comes, I'm sure you'll be here to hear it. Hopefully that will, that will satisfy your concerns. Okay, thank you. Okay, on the left again. Sir, you had a question? Yeah. This is your money. It's a pleasure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Amadeo Diadamo. About your last name? My um, yeah. Address at 913 Renate Drive, Unit 4. Can you spell your last name, sir, please? Yes. D apostrophe A D A M O. Sure. Uh, your question? Um, just a few questions. First of all, since I live on Renate Drive, is there any access from this development to Renate, uh, any of the roadway of Renate Drive? No, we will not connect to your development directly. Not, not okay. <clears throat> the second is um, you asked for uh, relief from uh, the 20% clear cut area and uh, according to what is here it indicates that 
you could clear cut the whole of the property. Is that correct? I think we'll have testimony from our landscape architect yeah, that on that issue. The and it may not be you know, suitable for me to respond. <laughs> But uh, there is a tree mitigation ordinance in town, and we're going to have to address how we comply. Okay. Um, you know, there are ways to deviate from a strict application of that, and we may talk to the professionals in the town about that. Okay, thank you. And then um, the property was originally a, um, in, in part, originally a graveyard. Is that correct? Not according to what the owner just said. I, I don't know. Um, you know. We've only been under contract for the last two years. Uh, Mr. Cusimano, who came up and testified, said that the gravestones that were referred to by one of the board members are not on his property. Not on that property. But that would probably yeah. have to be confirmed, right? Yeah. So uh, I suppose we can. Um, you know, maybe send out someone to, to you know, identify by GPS where those gravestones are located. Um, you know, I hate to spend a lot of money on survey crews to find gravestones that aren't on our site, but uh, I guess there's a way to confirm that. Okay. Um, and then I want to ask, since I live on uh, Renate Drive, um, <coughs> part of the uh, property there abuts very close to where I live. Now, that is an area that's very heavily treed. And um, clear cutting of any sort really in, um, <clears throat> impacts on the people who live on the Nate Drive. Um, can you give us some uh, assurance that you'll have as little chopping down of these very wonderful trees in that abuts? of the property of um, Claremont Hills. Well, I think what we can do is, you gave us your address, we'll look to see where your unit is located, and maybe at the next hearing we can come back and say and describe for you what parts of the site nearest your home are being cleared versus not being cleared. Um, it kind of depends on where you're located, because some of those you know, buildings go pretty far back. They're adjacent to open space, and some are not. Okay. And um, have you some estimate, having the um, design and design of the buildings, do you have some estimate of the number of children who will be coming into our school system? We do. In fact, we prepared a community impact statement, which is required by the town, um, it was done by Richard Redding Associates, and he will, I believe, be testifying at one of the subsequent hearings. Uh, but his findings are already concluded. Uh, that report submitted, I don't have it in front of me, but yes, there's an estimate of school-aged children. Well, what concerns me is the, the uh, design of some of the buildings as three-story buildings where you have uh, four bedrooms. Now with four bedrooms, we can anticipate at least a few children. Sir, are you going to testify? Because if you're going to testify, we're going to have to swear you in. I'm sorry? What is your are you going to testify or are you going to ask a question? Well, I asked the question as to whether there was some idea of how many school children would be added to are in our town. And I believe yeah. the witness indicated that there is a community impact statement that's been provided as part of the record that the applicant intends to produce expert testimony regarding same. And so my question is if you're going to make a statement relative to his limited testimony on this, you're going to have to be sworn in because you're giving evidence. Okay. Well, it was not my intention to make a statement. I just Again, was sir, that concerned about the number of children who will be added to our, our school system and the fact that the design of some of the buildings was such that, uh, rather unusual, such that um, you ended up with four bedroom. Um, now now, you, now okay. you're testifying, sir. So. 
and frankly i believe the testimony of the applicant was it was three bedroom units not four but if you wish to, to place testimony on the record then we'll have you sworn in no that, that's quite all right well thank you very much okay thank you anyone else on the left side come on up <clears throat> Lorraine Chambers, 673 Dover Court, Hillsboro. Um, my question is, the property that's to the west between the new units and the condominiums, um, who owns that and is there, are there plans for future development? I couldn't tell you offhand who owns them. They're listed on our engineering sheets because we have to list all the property owners within 200 feet. Um, and we're not aware of any plans to develop those okay. uh, at this juncture. They're zoned for home office occupation. Home office occupation. So okay. they, could, they could have an office in their home. They could build a bigger building and call it a home occupation. Uh -huh. um, you know, it all depends on the, the board's um, right review of those plans. But there's nothing in the plans that you know of? I'm not aware of any. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the left side? Okay, the right side. Susan Gulliford, Hunt Club Road. Um, oh, I have one quick question on the tot lot. Is that being shared with the RPM properties in the front? No, it's not proposed to be. Okay. I didn't notice any other tot lots, and there's going to be 54 apartments there. So, um, I have questions on your, your two private access, the easements. Um, the professional building parking lot is basically your, your secondary uh, exit from the development. So you're going to be using a, a parking lot aisle as a driveway? Are, are, the, are you going to be using the parking lot aisle as a driveway, and are the requirements different for a parking lot aisle than a driveway across access easement? You may need either our traffic engineer or our design engineer to talk to that issue because I don't know the width of that access drive. I, okay. I know it's not but narrow, but the, the whether it yeah. rises to the level of a street, I'm not sure. Yeah, and the assumption is you're calling it an aisle. Yeah. Well, that's an assumption. You know that it's, it's an, on the plan. It's not an aisle. Okay. okay, it's a street. Okay, you got to. It's all in perspective. You know of the dimension. So a drive it's the not. Yeah, and I had the same question before. I was, similar concern with the other access so that will all be demonstrated with the i think with the engineers but it's it's not it's definitely not an aisle it's not a common parking lot right that we're as you can at. see it's 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 separated from the parking okay east and west of it okay because right. i was also wondering about the loss of parking spaces and the professional right. yeah, building, but, but that'll come up that's with more for the right yeah, this, okay. this this questions really are just for the testimony that he gave yeah. on the generic signs the building lots the, the design of the buildings yeah. etc there will be more professional right. testimony brought at the next meeting where all these specific questions will be brought on if be answered okay the single yeah. family homes that are proposed they are going to be four bedroom correct they are that's correct thank you i just want to make sure it was clear on the record that that's not an aisle you know okay any more questions from the public Come on up. Brandon Williams, 513 Amwell Road. Um, is this just the first phase of this development? Is there a second phase? Or? No, this is it. Um, what you see in this application is all that we have under contract. <coughs> We're not expanding to any adjacent property. So um, that's the total sum of our proposal. Zion to the west of it, one of the houses to the west of it. I didn't know if the rest of the wooded lots there would be, you know, up for redevelopment at some point. It's it's not included in the redevelopment plan, um, but that would be up to the town. Okay. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Motion to close public. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, what we did was uh, uh, presented a broad overview, a factual presentation of, of what the applicant is proposing. Uh, we are committed to, to come back with, with our expert witnesses and, in effect, uh, prove our uh, case for the uh, particular development, and we're prepared to do that. Uh, I think uh, it's clear that the applicant is willing to work with your professionals, as evidenced by the fact that uh, we're conducting meetings with your, your engineer. Uh, and uh, we will probably be in a position to make adjustments to the application as it currently exists. And uh, we look forward to uh, a, a full hearing on this application uh, as soon as possible. I'm sure. And we'd like the hearing continued, uh, hopefully, to uh, what is our next uh, date uh, certain? Available yeah, date, David. There's a couple of things to take into consideration. One is. Uh, You'll be meeting, you, the applicant, will be meeting with the Environmental Commission again, what, May? Uh, May 23rd. May 23rd. Um, as I noted earlier, we are in the process of putting together a redeveloper agreement. Um, it would have to go to the Township Committee, obviously, for their approval. Um, as indicated earlier, the applicant does intend to revise the plans to some degree. For all that to take place in, in an appropriate manner, uh, I would suggest a July meeting, which we have available July 7th and July 14th. Let's take the 14th. The time of decision on this application happens to be okay. July 14th. So we, we may, depending on when the board decides to schedule this, we may want to uh, request an extension from the applicant. On July 14th, because Gary Dean will be here too. Yeah. Is there a preference, Councillor, uh, to that? Yes, yeah, so it would be July 14th if, as right. an available we'll July date. Schedule for July 14th. Uh, yes, grant an extension through July 31st. Uh, the infamous extension paper happens to have one. <laughs> <laughs> Always at the ready. Our planner. <laughs> Expedite. Uh, <laughs> Therefore, what we are seeking is a motion to continue this application to July 14th. No further notice requirements and that the applicant is granted time of decision extension at least until the 31st of July. That's correct. Okay. And uh, would it be possible for you to leave those displays there maybe for the public that they could take those, that handouts? Yes. That's fine. Okay. Yes. I have some extras of these too. If you yes, want. I mean for those that you can hand out. This. All right. So motion. we have a motion for that. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call. Yes. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Wagner. Yes. Mr. Hesseth. Yes. Mr. Becarena. Yes. Ms. Forrest. Yes. Vice Chairman Dr. Maruli. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Chairman Lapan. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Okay. Frank, don't leave. You can hand them out. I don't need them. Everybody's got one, so you can hand them out to who needs them. All right, so we have a uh, a little more to go here. We have no correspondence. Uh, we could entertain a motion for adjournment. No. Move to adjourn. No. Uh, one other item we'd ask for a motion to cancel the May 26, 2016 business meeting. Move to cancel May 26. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, no. May 26 now is canceled. To Move now to adjourn. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Wow. <laughs>